Safe, Mr. Clark? You don't think something can go wrong? Nothing will go wrong if we follow our plan. I'm not a man who takes chances. Mm, you sure got everything worked out to a T. My inside contact tells me Miss Salisbury drives to the country club every afternoon at 3 o'clock. And she always drives alone, correct? Sure, just like you told me. I followed her every day for a week, and she never had nobody with her. Good. Now, at the entrance to the club, the road is hidden by trees. Is that right? Yeah, it's the perfect place to make the snatch. I think it best we take Miss Salisbury and the car. Mm. Why would we take her car? An abandoned car would be noticed. We don't want them to know that she's been taken until we've safely hidden her. Well, I've been thinking over what you said about the ransom, and I, I think we ought to raise the ante. This Salisbury guy is loaded. estimation I think you're absolutely correct I think we ought to the departing eavesdropper is Sam Lynch the conversation that he's just overheard will change his life abruptly. It may even finish it. These two men, Mr. Clark, so-called, he hasn't used his real name in years, and his good friend, Mr. Baby Hoffman, take their work quite seriously. As you will have overheard, their current enterprise concerns the kidnapping and murder of the very beautiful Miss Kay Salisbury. Mr. Clark and Mr. Hoffman know that Mr. Lynch has overheard them. And Mr. Lynch knows that they know that he knows. Mr. Lynch also knows that if he talks, no one will believe him and he will be murdered. And if he doesn't talk, Miss Salisbury will be murdered. This is the predicament of the man in the middle. That's the name of our story, based on a prize-winning novel by Charlotte Armstrong. Our principal players are Mr. Mort Saul, Sue Randall, Mr. Frank Albertson, and Mr. Werner Klemper. As sure as my name is Boris Karloff, eavesdropping can be very dangerous. You will agree fervently as you enjoy this thriller. A dog, Fred? Well, it was me and this dog. You ever see a dog get run over by a car, Fred? No, sir. I never did. Well, I never did either, but I almost did. I pulled this dog out from in front of a car that was headed right for him. You know what happened to me, Fred? I uh, got a broken collarbone and a concussion. I was out for a week. That happened when I was 10 years old. It's the first crisis of my life. I found something out since then. Live and learn. The thing to do is just to live and try and enjoy the show. One ticket is all you get. It's a continuous performance, so you stay in your seat. I thought about that dog, Fred. Save the dog and die doing it? I know the answer to that one. It wouldn't be worth it. I wouldn't do it. It's not my dog. Mr. Clark, I understand you, Mr. Lynch. Good night. Sometimes it's a lousy show, Fred, but you stay in your seat, because once you leave, you don't get another ticket. Those are the rules. You know what I mean, Fred? I guess that's some kind of philosophy. You know, philosophy is a way to live. Put that in my tab, will you? Sam, here, let an expert. And you got the wolf at Sam, old buddy. 
You gotta learn to roll with them. One thing I don't have is a hangover, Eddie. Don't fight it, Sam. Keep relaxed. Keep your head down, your elbows loose, and your eye on the ball. Sam, about that matter. When you get some loot is soon enough. Thanks, you're a pal, Sam. And I wouldn't think of putting the arm on you again, but... Thanks, Sam. I'll remember. Sure. This is the way it has to end, Scaletti. You're evil. You've got to die. It's the only way I'd finally be rid of you. Good, good. That's it. Just right. You liked it? Oh, it's perfect. Now, let me get it down before we go any further. Okay. This is how it has to end, Scaletti. You're evil. Should it be evil or vile? Vile, that's more yeah. than character. Hello, Larry. Bud, how's it progressing? With us, it's progressing. Where have you been? Yeah, well, I'm 10 minutes late. What, are you going to make a federal case out of it? How does it look? Well, Larry's got some terrific ideas on the underworld piece. Let me read it to you. Now, that one's in the bag. What we should be working on is the dramatic sketch for the guest star. I was hoping you'd come up with some ideas. I've been thinking about it all day. I got a couple ideas. Of course, Larry didn't like them, but, well, we at least ought to kick him around. Why, well, tell him, tell him. Well, th this Hollywood star comes to town for a personal, see? Now, on the train, she meets this dark, handsome guy. Good? All right, she goes overboard for this guy. And by the time they get to New York, she's head over heels. And it turns out he's really the head of a mob, huh? Well, I could go on. Look, suppose a guy was in a bar, and he hears two guys, tough guys, criminals. Say so they're going to kidnap a society girl. Sam. Now, wait a minute, Larry. These guys are really dangerous. They may kill the girl. And if the guy goes and talks to the police and says what he overheard, they might kill him, too. Now, what does he do? Sam, will you knock it off? What? That's not what they want from us. Granted, it has a good dramatic premise, but they specifically stated they wanted something with a romantic interest. There's no romance in this kidnapping thing. Larry, I wasn't suggesting that. This is serious. Forget it, Sam. Forget it. Now, let's stick with Buddy's idea about the Hollywood star and the handsome gang lord. Sam, will you pay attention? Yeah. Yeah, it sounds very promising. All right, let's get on with it. Now, this uh, Hollywood star gets on the plane, and as she's no, getting... train. On... Train, I think's better. It gives them more time together, huh? Yeah, you're right. This yeah. Hollywood star gets on the train, and as she's getting on the train, she... Now, do you think it's better to have her bump into the gang lord now, or should we wait until uh, nope. he's coming out of the compartment? Out of the compartment. He's looking for the manicurist. reason for this. You heard me in the bar. You know my position. You, 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 there's no reason to come here. We heard you, Mr. Lynch, but uh, we didn't think you sounded convincing. Not completely convincing. I'm a neutral, unequivocally. Why should I talk? I got everything to lose and nothing to gain. Isn't that good enough for you? No. 
I'm a businessman, Mr. Lynch. I've invested a great deal of time and effort into organizing this venture. I'm not about to see it fail simply because you have big ears. What do you want me to do? Post an affidavit that I won't talk? Or I, you, I can't get an insurance policy? We have our own method of insurance, Mr. Lynch. We must convince you that if anything goes wrong, you'll no longer be with us. Mr. Lynch, if the police interfere, if they take us, I warn you, it'll do you no good. We have arranged for some associates of ours to finish with you. You understand. I think Mr. Lynch is convinced. <laughs> here already. He's in with your father. Oh? Hello. Come in. I have an appointment with Mr. Salisbury. I talked to him on the phone this morning. You're expected, sir. Will you follow me? Do I know you? No. Oh. In here, sir. Basil, if Mr. Dulane asks for me, would you tell him I've taken Jean for a walk? Yes, miss. Mr. Salisbury, I asked to see you privately. Well, this is Mr. Dulane, my daughter's fiance. He's a member of the family. Charles, I must advise you not to talk to this man alone. Mr. Lynch, whatever your business with me is, I am not going to discuss it unless Mr. Dulane is present. If, as you said, you're concerned about my daughter's welfare, I think we should proceed with that business. Yeah. Mr. Salisbury, first I've got to have your word that when you hear what I've got to tell you, you won't do anything about it without checking with me. Now, what does that mean? It means that he's going to want to do something about what I've got to tell him. And there are certain things he could do which could make it very dangerous for me. Well, what certain things? Like going to the police, for example? That's one of them. Now, do you think I'm going to let him tie his hands with a promise like that? How do you function here, as an attorney or a member of the family? Now, sir, if you give him your word, you'll keep it. And now there is no guarantee that this man will. That's right, no guarantee at all. I came here to tell you how to save your daughter's life. Now, do you want to hear me or don't you? Well, suppose it's blackmail. Forget it. Mr. Lynch. You have my word. Unless you do something about it right away, your daughter's going to be kidnapped and maybe murdered. Now, that's a little melodramatic. Yes, it is, but it's true. Well, what proof have you got? Proof? Now, you do think we're going to act on a statement like that without any evidence? That's your problem. I told you, you heard me. What you do about your daughter from here on out is up to you. Where did you get this information? I'm sorry. Do you know my daughter? No, is that important? I have no idea. I'm trying to decide on your motivation for coming here. So am I. Mr. Salisbury, you remember during the war, the conscientious objectors, the uh, pacifists, the draft board used to throw one question at them. What would you do if you saw a maniac about to attack somebody? It's a moral question, and it interests me. I know what I'd do. I'm a pacifist right now. No causes. I sit on the fence, and I watch, and I listen. Is that a philosophy, Mr. Lynch? 
or an excuse for dodging responsibility. Last night, that question came up in a very practical way. I became involved with a maniac about to attack somebody, and I found my pacifism has limits. If the people who intend to kidnap your daughter knew I came here, they'd kill me. That's why I wanted your promise not to go to the police. The police can't act without evidence. They'd question me, and I wouldn't talk, so they'd hold me. Then whether your daughter was kidnapped or not, the instant I was released, I'd be killed. Well, uh, what do you suggest, short of going to the police? Send her to Europe. Why Europe? South America, then. But get her out of the country, huh? Well, um, thank you very much for your information, Mr. Lynch. I'll consider it. You don't have time to consider it. It was very kind of you to come. And if you'll leave your address, I'll have my secretary send you a check for your trouble. Is that why you think I came here? For a check? I, I've got to talk to you. Why? Because you're in trouble. Well, not that I know of, but I think you are. You don't know how much. There's all kinds of trouble. It goes on all the time. Violence is almost a casual thing. You don't understand that, do you? I, I read the newspapers. That's violence once removed. I tried to get through to your father, but no one listens. Nobody listens. You've got to no, listen. I don't know what you... you're talking about, but I'm sure that you mean well. Mean well? Get in the world, will you? Please take your hand off my arm. I asked you to take your hand off my arm. See that man in the doorway? In back of you. Look at him. Yes, I see him. You recognize him? Yes. Well, who is he? Lenore's boyfriend. Get in the car. What? Get in the car. <laughs> People think this is a vacation. There we go. <laughs> the nearest neighbor is eight and a half miles away. Why don't you sit down? Be comfortable. Why am I here? I've been trying to tell you all the way I up know, here. And I know, and I don't understand what you're talking about. I never heard of you till yesterday. Your picture's all over the paper. I was in this bar. I heard these two guys say they were going to kidnap you. Two guys? Bad people. I was very logical about it. I went to see your father. I tried to spell it out to him. but He wouldn't listen to me. That's when I saw you on the street. But why did you push me into your car? Because one of them is your maid's boyfriend. That's why. One of the guys in the bar? Yeah. You're safer here than a lot of places you could be. You don't believe me, do you? No.
Yes, of course I'll wait. Charles, I don't care how many private detectives you hire. This belongs to the police. I will call in the police when Kay is back. You can't wait that long. Alan, I don't know much about kidnapping, but I know one thing. There's no percentage in the kidnappers committing murder unless there's so much pressure put on them, they get panicked. Now, I don't know whether they're watching this house or not. They may be. But I am not going to have them see the police coming and going. Kay is my daughter, and I'm handling this situation. Yes, I'm listening. Well, Milton, I want as much as I can get from you. 50,000, even 100,000, whatever you can let me have. I'll explain just as soon as I'm through here. Small bills, tens, twenty, old money. Mm hmm. And I want it sent over by messenger within half an hour, if that's possible. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, Milton, uh, this is a confidential matter, and your discretion is important. Exactly. Martha, there's no easy way to tell you this. We're not certain yet, but we have good reason to believe that Kay has been kidnapped. Disappeared. And what does that mean? Walked out of the house and disappeared. That's interesting. Disappears into places unknown. Now tell me exactly what that maid told you. She tells me the girl is gone. She tells me the girl just disappeared. Why do you figure she did that? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe she's got cold feet with the marriage coming up. Is that your idea or theirs? That's my idea. They telephone the police? No. It's a most interesting situation. Drive. Where? Just drive. You mean there's no ransom? No, there's no ransom. Do you realize what my mother and father must be going through right now? Yeah, I think I have an idea. Then let's get out of here. We can go to Alan. Alan? I talked to Alan already. He was there with your father. You're safe as long as you're here. If I let you go, you'd be dead in 24 hours. You really in Get in the world, will you? At least enough to be scared? Yes? Get us a hundred thousand and you'll have your daughter back. Would you repeat that? One hundred thousand dollars and you'll have your daughter. But I, I don't have that much. I assumed I would need some money, so I have about eighty thousand dollars in small bills here in the house right now. But I can't get any more at this time of night. One hundred thousand is the price, Salisbury, not eighty thousand. But that's all I have here. I, I can get you more tomorrow, but I can't get more tonight. What about my jewels? Would you accept jewelry? My wife's jewelry. No jewelry, Mr. Salisbury. But we'll settle for the 80,000. Bring it where we tell you and bring it alone. Well, give me the instructions. I'll follow them. You drive to Fairvale Park. Fairvale Park? At the third traffic light after the main gate. Third traffic light? You go left on Beechwood. Left on Beechwood. And drive slowly. Drive slowly.
Where's the money? What time is it? 8.30 in the morning. Uh, I've lost track. Now, uh, can we go over this again? When are they going to return Kay? I don't know. Well, exactly what did they say? Nothing. On the first telephone call, they promised to return her unharmed 12 hours after the ransom had been paid. That's seven hours ago. Well, where are you supposed to pick her up? They're going to let me know. Uh, is Mrs. Salisbury still asleep? Uh, no. No, don't awake her. Thank you. I had Dr. Barish come over and give her a sedative. He said she was very tense. Does that surprise you? Don't be snide with me. I'm sorry. Have you heard anything more from your detectives? They're still looking for Lynch. He's disappeared, too. They feel that Lynch has the key to this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, they'll find him, I promise you. When they do, he'll tell us the names of the people who did this. We'll find Kay. Do you have to keep going around and around? What's the matter? I'm just trying to figure everything out. And you're not getting anywhere. It's very hard to accept the fact that everything I've done up until now has been wrong. And you don't know what to do next. I never said I knew what I was doing. I'm just trying to get us out of this and save my job. Where are you going? There's plenty of food. I'll be back. When you kidnap somebody, you're supposed to take care of them, Sam. Me to check the oil and tires? Sure, everything. Gotcha. Mr. Salisbury, this is Sam Lynch. I want you to know your daughter is safe and in good health. Where is she, Mr. Lynch? Sam. Use that phone. There's another line. Trace this call. Are you going to tell me where she is or aren't you? I'll settle down, Mr. Salisbury. I'll give you instructions as to how to find her in just a minute. Where is she? In a minute, I said. But first, I've got to be certain you're going to believe what I'm going to tell you. You must believe me. I'm, I'm listening. Yesterday, I told you your daughter was going to be kidnapped. She has been kidnapped. Do you think I'm not aware of that? Get to the point. Keep him talking. All right. I'm in this thing now. I'm up to my neck in it. I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm going to tell you once, and then I wash my hands of it. You can do as you please. Lynch, if it's the other 20,000 you want. Oh, I don't want any other 20,000. You heard me perfectly well, Lynch. I brought $80,000 in small bills to you or one of your associates last night, and I want my daughter returned to me. You paid? 
Yes, I paid immediately and in good faith. Without going to the police, I paid. One of your people called and made the arrangement. What is all this? Aren't you keeping in touch with each other? Listen to me, Mr. Salisbury. I had nothing to do with this ransom thing. I swear it. But I've got a pretty good idea who did. Why don't you get your ever alert Mr. Dulane to check with a man named Clark? I don't know his first name, but he's got a sidekick named Baby Hoffman. And you can find him in a hurry by checking with one of your servants. Her name's Lenore. And Hoffman's her boyfriend. Please, Lynch, will you uh, stop all this nonsense and get to the point? You still don't believe me, do you? How much do you want, Lynch? Tell me. I want my daughter back. Take it easy. In fact, forget the whole thing. I'll do it myself. And don't worry about your daughter. She's okay. You'll get her back as soon as it's safe. Fred's, and it's him. Eddie Cowan there? Sure, where else? It's your buddy. Hello, Sam. Listen, Eddie, I need a favor. Any old thing, Sam. You name it, I'll take care of it. Eddie, I don't have time for the buddy system. You know a guy named Clark? Baby Hoffman hangs around with him. Sure I know him, Sam, but... Now listen, Eddie, I want this message delivered to Clark exactly, word for word. Word for word. You know me, Sam. Yeah, I know you. And then when you get an answer, you come back and meet me at Fred's at 3 o'clock, right? Now get the message. You tell him that Sam Lynch has the commodity Clark wanted. Tell him I said I'll hold it for him until he picks up the other 20,000, if he'll skip the rest of the plan. No further action. Tell him I said if he doesn't agree, I can talk as good as I can listen. You got that, Eddie? Word for word, Sam. What do you think? It's hard to say. Couldn't get a thing on the call. Must have been a payphone somewhere. What are we going to do? What can we do? This Lynch character doesn't make sense to me. Maybe he's in on it and Clark is a decoy to cover his next move. Or maybe they've dropped him out of the action. Or maybe he's just some kind of kook. Who is this man, Clark? Well, up to a couple of years ago, he was part of the syndicate. He got five years for extortion. As far as I know, he's still serving it. He's out on parole. A week, maybe ten days. Well, I think we'd ought to talk to this man. Can we find him? Sure. He's living open. He has to. Well, then bring him here. I want to see him. Stay sober. I counted on you, Eddie. I am sober, Sam. I just had to sit down. All you had to do was deliver I did a... it, Sam. I saw Mr. Clark. And I saw Mr. Hoffman. I even got their address and phone for you. I gave them the message, just like you said. What did they say? They gave me a message back. Very brief. No words. <laughs> I got a friend who needs a gun. Has he got a permit? My friend's in a kind of an emergency. If you understand, Sam, in a situation like this, it may be expensive. It's illegal. It takes cash. I understand. It's 
it loaded? Hmm. You want me to show you how it works? So you can explain to your friend? He's seen it in the movies. You pull the trigger. I use your phone. I got a couple of calls. Enjoy. Sam, if you're going to wear the gun in your coat like that, it won't be a secret to anybody. So what should I do with it? At least put it under your coat. Under your belt. Hello? Hoffman? That depends. Who's this? Never mind who it is. I want to tell you how you can find Sam Lynch. Can you find your friend, Mr. Clark? Yes, I know where I can find Mr. Clark. I would like to have someone explain. These gentlemen will tell you that I came here freely under the impression that I was invited to talk business. Nobody told me what kind of business, but I know you to be a man of considerable business success. So I came. Now I want to know what that business is. Mr. Salisbury's daughter has been kidnapped. That's too bad. Yes, well, Mr. Salisbury thinks you might have something to do with it. I suppose he feels that way on your advice. No. We got a call from Sam Lynch. Lynch? Samuel Lynch. Not a man who is known to me. This kidnapping, when did it happen? Yesterday afternoon. Yesterday afternoon? But as a matter of fact, all day yesterday and well into the evening, I was in the office of a man who deals in real estate. And this is his telephone number and his place of business. I was buying a piece of real estate. I can prove that with a number of witnesses. We'll check on it. I should hope you will. Now, is this the end of your business with me? I should think so. Yes, these men will drive you back. Thank you, that won't be necessary. I'll find a taxi. Good evening. What are you doing here? Got the word where we find Lynch. Interested? Yes, very interested. You've got 30 seconds to get out of here. Those are the keys to my car. I want you to take it and drive home. Don't stop anywhere. Not until you tell me what this is all about. Does everything in your life have to be laid out clean and clear with neat endings? I won't go. There's the car. Follow the dirt road to the junction, turn left, and follow the signs. Bon voyage. No, no, not until you explain. Ow! Will you go home? You're no gentleman. There's no other way to communicate with you. You have to leave. All right. Right, I'll leave. I'm sorry if I hurt you. You're expecting somebody. Yeah, another woman.
Sam, please tell me what this is all about. I'll tell you later. Can I do anything for you? Just go. Use a gun. Just bring her to me at Lynch's place. come a long way to find you, Mr. Lynch. I appreciate that. I trust the directions were adequate. Yes, the directions were adequate. The girl is gone. Gone? Some time ago. Mr. Lynch, you've made me a very great deal of trouble. I don't know what got into you to take the girl, but uh, I'm not very angry about that. The girl is only a means to get my hands on a little money I need. I have my money. 
On the other hand, Mr. Lynch, you draw my name into the situation, and that becomes a difficult matter because it hurts my credit and threatens my freedom. I have to get myself out of that situation. You understand. I understand. I regret having made the wrong decision about your character, Mr. Lynch. You give the impression of a man who knows how to keep his mouth closed. Coffee must be ready. I never really wanted much more than just to get the girl out of your reach. I thought if I did that, you'd have to start over again with somebody new. Somebody I wouldn't know about until it was all over. You're a man who makes plans. I'm a man who does the first thing that comes into his mind. And everything I've done up until now has been wrong. The more I tried to get out of this, the more I got in, deeper and deeper. That's right. Planning is very important, Mr. Lynch. Living is important, too. Sugar? Yes, please. Move and I'll kill you. That's more reason than I need. I didn't understand you. I didn't know why I was in this until you killed Eddie. I tried to be a fence sitter all my life, but there's no fence. <laughs> This is all about. I want to talk to Sam. Don't you think you two have talked enough? Alan. Okay. Okay, tell him whatever money buys, he's got it. I don't think that would mean much. I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry. I didn't understand you. You're not the only one. You know what I think? Tell me what you think. I think I'm glad all of this happened. Well, I I don't mean to you. I mean to me. You know what I think? You're in the world now. Aren't we going somewhere? Let me know what you think of it. <laughs> 